Tēnā koutou katoa, my name is Ivor Jones. Welcome to He Korero i o Portuki, where I have a korero with a few people that, who want to have korero, and we put up a cast and see if people would like to share it and uh, are interested in some of the talk about. Uh, tonight, I'd like to introduce to you Jordan Walker, who is standing for the Green Party in the 2023 general election. Oh, yeah. Um, kia ora koutou. Um, ko mā tātua te I feel like I can just read my pepe. <laughs> yeah. uh, ko mā tātua te waka, ko maunga pōhatu, te maunga, ko waikare moana te awa, uh, ko ngā te kuri te hapu, ko te waiiti te marae, ko tūhoi uh, te iwi, huri ahau no ngā te kahunu ki te wairua, ngā te parau, ngā wai te rangi, ngā te pākehā wiki, ko Jordan Walker tōku uh, Yeah, I'm the East Coast Green Party candidate. So, yeah, it's really lovely to be here. I will thank you for um, exposing me to StreamYard. It's my first time. All good, all good. Elmar, uh, a common friend of ours, um, tapped me and he said, hey, come and have a, have a court at all with Jordan. Uh, our local candidate, and I said, yeah, 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 let's let's have a have a court at all. <clears throat> Full disclosure, I am going green this year. Um, my voting pattern in the past has been like all over the place. It'd be an interesting conversation. <laughs> um, but I've seen the lights, you can say, and um, the Greens are the only ones that are seeming to make sense to me uh, during our uh, you know the times that we find ourselves in uh, so just full disclosure with that um, but the structure of um, tonight is it'll be a corridor it'll be about 15 minutes uh, we've got a set of questions that I flicked through to Jordan and Jordan's had a look through them and prepared very uh, diligently I'm sure and um, we'll just have a corridor and weave all of those topics through it'll take about 15 minutes uh, we hope that you like and share and are able to you know, share this information around and get it to the people who you think might need to get a uh, hold of it and listen to it and get out and vote this year. So um, yeah, with that, uh, welcome Jordan. What do you think are the key priorities and policies for the East Coast electorate and how do they align with the Green Party's vision and values, do you think? Mm, very good part five. I think that the Green Party have the sort of evidence-based policy that we need in this electorate. I mean, obviously we are, you know, worldwide um, across Aotearoa, we're facing um, the climate emergency and the Green Party is really the only party that sort of has a solution for um, for that to help us to better prepare us for um, sort of the future and what that might look like here. Um, also, I think on the East Coast, what we sort of face is um, we have, you know, 50% um, people who live here are Māori and 80% of people who live here are uh, uh, sort of low income earners and you know with the cost of living sort of increasing and uh, the inflation sort of impacting that as well it's just a it's a huge struggle you know if, if we're not feeling poor and we're like flooded so it's um, yeah I feel like Green Party really are like is the other party that has the solution for that cool so you've um, sort of touched upon some projects or initiatives that you might get involved in for example mm. you touched upon the flooding um do you still see that as a priority um, for the East Coast moving forward or what do you see are the uh, com priorities in terms of the community and the environment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think that we just, it's kind of in our nature eh, that if we don't, if we aren't existing in a crisis, then we just are quite easy, like quite quick to forget about it. So. Now that it's starting to dry out, everyone's more focused on the fact that the sun's out coming into summer. It's kind of cyclical in that way, eh? So, like, flooding or drought or any sort of extreme weather event is always going to be an issue if we don't um, do something about the way that we live. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's just going to be a continuous thing for us here. And, you know, the Green Party have been putting through policies like the um, clean power payment policy, which is kind of a policy that helps Farno transition over into, um, you know, solar power or to warm their whare a little bit more with um, sort of interest-free loans and grants um, to be able to make that transition. 
it's us trying to change the way that we travel and that's a really hard thing to do here, right? Because we're so conditioned to jumping in our car, even if it's just, and I'm guilty of this, I, I have a diesel truck and I feel really bad about that every time I turn up to Green Pretty Hui in my truck, but it's such a habit and I see that every day when I travel to work. Like we've got traffic jams here in Gisborne and that's unusual eh? because it's actually everywhere in Gisborne is like at least seven minutes away. Um, I think that the policies that the Green Party are trying to implement and like root deeply have the capacity to help us gain new habits, um, whether that be transitioning from um, a fossil fuel burning vehicle into electric vehicle. That's not such an easy thing to do. Like that in itself is a privilege to be able to afford an electric vehicle. But having some parties in government that actually make it accessible for Fano to be able to afford these things, I mean, that's that's an improvement. It's, it's a bigger improvement um, compared to other parties anyway. Yeah, that, that, that's fantastic. You've touched upon um, a wide range of things, for example, like climate change and environmental protection, economic development, social justice, a bit of cultural diversity. Um, so it's nice to see that you've um, touched upon some of the projects as well that touch on those themes, which is really, really interesting. Um, and so could you please describe to me how you intend as a candidate to engage with a wide range of diverse voices and interests that might be in these coast electorate, um, especially those of Māori and uh, Takatāpui and young people and rural residents? Could you give us a few examples? Yeah, I mean, I think it helps with my experience. Like, I come from all of those communities. I am Māori, I, you know, I grew up in urban areas and urbanisation isn't such a great thing for Māori, really. Mm. I mean, it sort of, you know, adds to our disconnection to our whakapapa and to our Māori tanga. So um, mm. I also have connections to rural areas. I mean, I grew up um, sort of playing in paddocks while my dad worked on the farm. You know, my mum and my uncles and my aunties uh, worked in sharing sheds as well. I am Takatapui, I'm Tangata Irafiti, so I'm transmasculine. Um, I also have a background in anthropology, uh, and anthropology didn't sort of afford me the ability to be able to connect with various communities. That's something that I just did naturally. Um, it was just a discipline that I lent into, and I was like, oh wow, there's actually you know, a study of this thing that I've just always deeply been interested in my whole life. Um, I like to think that I'm a really transparent and open person, so um, I'm sort of able to just connect with anyone. And like, sometimes, you know, I can connect with the most radical people who might have the uh, like complete opposing views to me, but we always find something that we can sort of relate to, you know, it's just like equal, like values, shared values. Some common ground. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you for touching upon some of the skills and experiences that you can bring to the role uh, of an MP and some of the challenges and responsibilities that you might face. Um, how do you intend to work with other MPs and parties and stakeholders in the media? Can you share some of your thoughts around those those topics? Yeah, I mean, I guess that comes back to common ground. You know, I mean, we can't really look at, you know, I'm just thinking about the other candidates who are standing I couldn't look at the National Party candidate, um, Dana Kirkpatrick, and just see her and see, like, the epitome of the National Party and, like, of angry white men, you know, or, like, angry white privileged men. I see um, a wahine who uh, is a mother, and so I kind of find that common ground with him. And if you sort of remove parties from it, right, and, like, I, I stood in the local body election for the Gizma District Council last year, and that's kind of what I start to think about. I start to think about those candidates and those now councillors who probably affiliate to like various parties, but we all managed to find a sort of common ground and that mm. came back to largely servicing our communities. So I think it could be relatively easy as you know, as long as there wasn't any sort of hate <laughs> um, from I guess the opposing side back to me. I mean I'm I can acknowledge I'm a very diverse candidate and with all the sort of um, controversy in, in the media, especially following, 
you know, Posey Parker's visit to mm. Old Settle in February and, and the kind of just absolute hate that that spurred amongst our community. Mm. Um, I can see, you know, if, if that were an issue, then maybe that would be a challenge. But I don't think that most MPs are trying to come to the table to have a fight. You know, I think that largely most of them come with a large heart wanting to actually help their community. Speaking about heart, how do you balance your personal and professional commitments, especially as a uh, parent of a young child and a researcher in the arts and community sector? Uh, balance. I think balance is something that I'm still, you know, I'm 33, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, I've uh. always been quite ambitious and I guess because I came from um, like a low-income whānau and like a single mum and I never really had much growing up and so the older that I've become and the more that I've sort of taken on opportunities it's it's kind of like a uh, I guess it's a bit addictive to keep taking on opportunities so I'm I am trying to find balance within um, within commitments and within doing that and yeah I guess it's just for me it's communication with my partner you know take for example this coming month you know I've to her and it's and it's like monitoring as well you know it's monitoring and making sure that you're asking at the right time and that um uh you know you're following your intuition and trying to read how how people are it's the communication and yeah just as i was saying looking forward to this next month is going to be quite busy for me um having to travel such a huge electorate to mm. attend maybe candidate hoods um and other various events and online events so it's just communication and it's saying you know this is going to come up can we sit down can we talk about this and um if it's not okay then then we can kind of go to the drawing board and try and work out how we can manage it and how we can make it work for each other and for our baby um and it's also sort of tapping into whānau as well and who are like obviously a newborn baby more than mm. happy to come in and, and hold hold the baby so yeah it's whānau it's communication and it's balance that's excellent thank you jordan for sharing around how you manage your time and your energy and your well-being of, of yourself and your whānau and, and some of the sharing some of the values and the principles that guide your decision making around what you do in your personal life but also as a green party candidate and a potential mp so thank you very much for demonstrating on how you um uphold those values and principles in everyday life and and just to conclude um I, i'd just like to thank you for your time and for coming along and sharing part of yourself um with me and, and with the audience and i really hope and, and wish you well for your um electorate run uh in 2023 and i i wish you all the best and namahi and thank you for your time is there anything you'd like to end with before we wind up sure um yeah, just, you know, if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm really that convinced, um, you know, maybe take a look at, maybe you can look at the Instagram page. I mean, I do post as regularly as possible, especially about Green Party Kaupapa. Um, mm -hmm. If, you know, you're a bit still hesitant beyond that and you want to know more, and if you want to research about policies, like one, I commend you for actually putting in the time to look at party policies because it really matters. Um, look at our manifesto, you know, you can follow the uh, link in my bio on the, the Jordan Walker for Greens page. It has a link tree link and there's one link that goes to our manifesto. That gives you an outline of um, of the party policies that we're putting forward the selection. Uh, yeah, just, you know, the time is now. Um, if you're thinking about party voting green, then that's awesome because you're thinking about the climate, you're thinking about people, you're thinking about nature, you're thinking about your babies, you're thinking about your mukupuna and your mukupuna's mukupuna. So yeah, kia ora, kia ora Ivor. thank you so much for, for having me tonight.